Hi everybody, and welcome to... This isn't really Disney Plus Pals. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's, uh... I guess this is like episode zero of scruffy-looking nerd herders. Which is me and Pat's future podcast. Pat is here. Say hi, Pat. Yeah. Vo vo voice, hi, Pat. voice yourself. I am voicing myself. No, you're not. You're voicing someone else. You're voicing the... <laughs> You're voicing the man. You're voicing the government. <clears throat> we have both seen Black Widow. We have opinions about it. Um, but we're going to start off not spoilery for you fun people at home. Because we get it. There's, there's some nervousness about going to the movie theaters. Disney Plus is trying to get $30 out of your pocket. It's it's a situation, and I, I get that. So, let, let's just start without spoilers. Pat, how did you feel about the marriage between Rocket Raccoon and Hawkeye in this film? Oh gosh. I think that was the best moment. That's kind of a spoiler, though, isn't it? I've, I've yeah. already screwed up. <laughs> well, Beautiful moment, though. Yeah, yeah, especially the fact that they played... That very slow version of Smells Like Team Spirit during it. <laughs> it was great. Kind of, kind of a weird choice, but, you know. That is another thing. We'll be talking about slight spoilers here, like the music and stuff. So if you don't want anything, leave now or, you know, just deal with it, man. <laughs> How did you feel about, about the intro to this? Because apparently some people are mixed on it. Include the music, or does that just include the whole whole like eating part? Appa the apparently, the whole like I haven't seen like, like, anybody complain about like the the music or anything except for you. Apparently, you didn't like the music, but um, I apparently some people thought that first action scene that was the intro. Apparently, people thought it was corny. Like like a lot of people didn't think it was funny. Like it was cool. People thought it was funny because Red Guardian's on the wing of the plane and stuff. But see, I think that whole opening didn't bother me. I think, well, I think the reason it didn't is because that whole that whole thing on the plane, on the him on the mm -hmm. wing, subtle, subtle by the way. It um, this is true. It actually reminded me of a scene in. GTA 5, because you do exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it didn't, like, it didn't, like, catch me off guard. Like, it didn't catch me as, like, oh, that's silly. Mm. I'm just like, oh, that's just an action thing. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it kind of sucked me in. Like, I'll, I'll admit, it got me interested right on the bat. Like, uh, mm. I'll, I'll go more into it when we talk about spoilers, but <clears throat> there's something they do specifically with uh, Melina, the mother character, uh, and Nat in the scene that immediately was like, holy crap, this is really cool that, that Nat sort of has to come in and immediately help save the day. And I, I thought the like intro with all of like the shots of like, look at the red room, look at the brainwashing. That's something I've never seen in a Marvel movie. I thought it was really cool. It, it was. I, I think, like the whole intro was. You actually you know what the intro reminded me of at first before the action. What? It kind of looked like Stranger Things. You know what? It gave me that vibe. I'm with you. Like yeah, like like, <laughs> like the way it was just two kids hanging out outside, and then yeah. they came in for dinner. Yeah. There was Ducktales on the TV. I see that. Yeah, because they even, because the, the, the two kids even look like they'd be, in, they'd be Stranger Things characters. Fr Frickin' Natasha was even riding her bike to start the movie. I, I can see the comparison. Yeah. That, or actually, it kind of reminded me of the of the remake of It a little bit. A little bit. I, yeah, I guess that's just the style now, when you use kids. I mean, I liked these scenes. I, I honestly, my only criticism is I wish... Elena would have been a little older in them. Just because, like, 
she's so young and this was such a like short period of her life it, it's weird to think that she would remember this as fondly as she does as an adult but like i i can i can like ignore that a little like she was 12 i guess she could probably remember a bit of it i she, you know it was it was weird because the the, the girl who's who's a young Yelena, mm -hmm. she she looked like who plays the Yelena? The older uh, Florence Pugh. Yeah, she looks like her. She did. But the one who was young, mm -hmm. Nat, not really. You know what it was? It was the hair. It may have been intentional. A little bit. Mm -hmm. You you want to mm -hmm. you want to know my biggest problem with this movie? That I can say without spoilers. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem with this movie is it is called Black Widow. And the thing I cared about maybe the least was Black Widow. <laughs> with, with the exception of Taskmaster, I, I think Nat had the least going on. I, I, I do think she was handled well and I loved some of her scenes towards the end. But in the end... I was just sitting here like, I wish this whole movie was about Red Guardian. I wish this whole movie was about Yelena. I I feel like Yelena going forward in the MCU is something I, like, need. Because I loved her in this one. Yeah. We'll say this, though. We'll get to Taskmaster. But, <laughs> mm. but uh, I, I have some thoughts. I'm sure you do, too. I, I have a couple of thoughts. I, I, I think <laughs> my... I, I will say this before we get mm. just to start it all off. Nothing in this movie made me angry. So that's good. Nothing pissed me off, but there were parts where I'm just like why? I <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> I think it's not even fair to compare this to the last episode of Loki. Because the last episode of Loki was literally some of the best the MCU had to offer, and this was like this was just a good, solid movie. And we're in a point with the MCU where, this is going to sound so freaking weird to say, sometimes it's not enough to be just a good, solid movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, there's no doubt all the future things. I guarantee you they'll all be good. Mm -hmm. But rather, it, but, if, but if they are amazing is the other part. I mean... Like, they'll all be solid, but, you know, it's... I agree. I, I, I have faith in, like, Marvel at this point. Like, Loki's not even over yet at the time of us recording this. It, it doesn't come out till Wednesday. Today is a... Today is Monday. Um, but, like, I did really like this movie. I think I liked it just about as much as most the origin movies, because... I was recently doing a list of my, like, favorites in the MCU. <clears throat> and I realized that I naturally kind of favor the team-up movies. And I was kind of grouping all of the origins together. Like, Black Panther, Black Widow, and Doctor Strange were literally all next to each other. And while I think all of those are great movies, I, I think they are a little bit held back. And this isn't really an origin movie for Black Widow. <laughs> this is an origin movie for Red Guardian. This is an origin movie for uh, Yelena. I think Yelena specifically, like if there's a Black Widow too, I think we'll, we'll probably be about her. And just without going into spoilers, these new characters are great. I, I, I love them all. I even like Molina, who is the mom character. I think the worst part of this movie is that it didn't come out after Civil War. This should have been the first movie to come out after Civil War. And since it didn't, it kind of feels like it's too late. Like, I wish I could go back and, like, rewatch all of the movies and put Black Widow where it probably should be. And then I wonder if I would have felt different. Because here, knowing she's dead... Knowing that the story does not continue for her, 
it, it honestly, like, I get it where people are shitting on this movie a little bit. I get it. That's a weird choice. What do you think? It's a, it, it definitely is strange because, you know, like, they made it seem, he was like, it, it, it almost felt like it was supposed to, it, it was like a origin movie, but it wasn't because mm-hmm. it was more like, it was basically, well, from the, with the timeline of it, it was more like, okay, this is what happened to her after Civil War. Mm-hmm. Like, this is where she was, which, <laughs> like you say, would have made more sense because now it almost feels like, it almost feels like it was almost advertised as that as like a this is the origin of Black Widow, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And like the only way you can like progress the Marvel plot, like the only way this movie contributes to the overall story, is if you view it as an origin story for Yelena. If you view it as an origin story for mm-hmm. these other characters going forward because quite frankly like spoiler alert i guess that story is over guys she she died in Endgame. she she doesn't come back to life in this movie which i i think if she did i would have honestly been annoyed because like you know you killed her stick to it <laughs> but it's it's just weird. It's just weird that it's like, yeah. okay, she's dead. Now we get the movie. And I know everybody said that and everybody's thinking that, but that is the biggest problem. So that's what I got to give to you people. If this movie would have came out sooner, it would have been better. And that's kind of my views. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I do agree with that because like, if it did come out where it, it was placed i feel like because at towards like after it was over well first off there's certain parts of the movie we'll get to that wouldn't have been there if it came out when it was supposed to after credit scene yeah that 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 would not have been the same <laughs> um you could have just taken that and put in that at yeah. the end of end game though <laughs> You know what's funny? It actually would have fit because then we would have known who that was, mm-hmm. who Elena was, <laughs> and, and for a reason I will not say right now. That that would have actually covered another criticism that people had in in game. I will bring up what that criticism is in spoilers because if I tell you, you're gonna know what the after credit scene is. But yeah, it it because de- I feel like if it had come out where it's placed, it definitely would have been like there would have been more of an excitement around it, I guess, because it would have been okay. What's next? Mm. Because after that, Black Widow, that would have been actually. I think we we'd actually talked about that too. We went through the timeline like after Black Widow was a bunch of other movies mm. in terms of the timeline. So it's like people would have been like, okay, what's happening next? What's going on? Like, where's Black Widow going now? And if she would have had that movie and then died, that would have been a huge plot twist. Like, that would have been really cool, I think. I I mean, in in Endgame, it's still like a plot twist. I don't think I saw it coming. Um, No. But, like... Do you think... What was that? (laughs) Do you think your boy Hawkeye was going to die? I was absolutely convinced... (laughs) <laughs> Hawkeye was gonna die. Like, if you would have asked me the day before I saw the movie, I would have told you he's not getting out of there. And I was yeah, very kinda, relieved when he yeah, got out. It kind of, yeah, because I remember real quick to that. Like, I remember when that movie was doing its trailers and that. Like, it did feel like Hawkeye was like, nope, there's no redeeming him. He's gonna have to die. <laughs> I. There, I, I, I will because be talking I will be talking a little bit more about Hawkeye in the spoiler section. But mm-hmm. I I think with Nat, like mm-hmm. she had some good stuff mm-hmm. in this movie. But was mm-hmm. your favorite part Black Widow? What what what, what was what was non spoilery your favorite part of the movie? Because for me I I do think it was Florence Pugh has Yelena. I, I, I loved her. I think I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think. 
I think my favorite parts were probably with Honestly, I think it, some of it was definitely with Red Guardian. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm with you. I think a lot of it was Yelena as well. And, like, if we look back, like, obviously, like, everybody's favorite part of, like, Black Panther is Wakanda and the cool story there with with mm -hmm. T'Challa. If you look at Doctor Strange, it's all of the magic and Stephen Strange's story. Here it's these other characters. And while like at least this isn't like a unlikable movie. Like there there's nothing wrong with the film. It just sort of feels like I don't know. It feels like there could have been more, you know? Like they kind of flirt with the idea of, like, telling us a story that has been hinted in the MCU, but they don't go all the way with it. Like, when I when I originally pitched um, a Black Widow movie, and this was before we knew about the Disney Plus shows, so this is before I found out Hawkeye was going to get his own thing. I honestly pitched a, a, a team-up movie between the two. I thought I thought the best thing to do for Black Widow is have it be Black Widow and Hawkeye, the movie. Show Budapest, mm -hmm. show some of their first missions. Maybe even like a flashback to that very first time they met and Clint chose not to kill her. Like the whole reason they're friends is because Clint was sent on a mission to assassinate her, but instead he brought her back and like made her a shield agent that's why their bond is so strong and i really wish we could have seen that relationship however i i did like the sister story with elena uh help yelena is it yelena or elena i think i'm saying both <laughs> i think it's yelena well i i really liked what was going on with yelena i i think their connection made sense to me and at the end you know why the characters are doing exactly what they're doing but it really felt like her movie like this was Yelena's origin story and the movie's called Black Widow Scarlett Johansson is right in the middle it, right here on, on screen we don't have Yelena in the middle in between our two heads no that's Scarlett Johansson she's the star of the show and the only time it really feels like this is her scene is at at the end when she's doing the plot infiltrating the base. Like it, it, when it there are flashbacks revealing what exactly her plan was. That's when it starts to feel like her movie. But it's the climax. <laughs> it's a little too late. I don't know. Am I wrong? Tell me if I'm wrong. No, it 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 did kind of it did kind of like jump around like the focus a lot. Mm. Also, between different characters, they went to so many different locations in this movie. Like they started in like, mm -hmm. didn't they start in Morocco or something? I think so. And then they went to like, at one point they go to Russia. Um. By the way, I don't know locations in the world, so if these locations are close to each other, I'm sorry that I'm dumb. But uh, they they also like had scenes in Budapest. They had scenes uh, where they broke Red Guardian out of like this super snowy mountain jail. There was a lot of traveling in this film. And yet that friend of hers, the, the guy who gets her the Quinjet at the end, he just keeps showing up. <laughs> How is he doing that? I get that that's a nitpick, but I want I want it to be revealed that he has like teleportation powers and he's like, oh, I've always got the hookup because I've always got these superpowers that let me steal shit. I don't know. Anything else you want to say before we go to spoilers? No, just the that that character you were talking about. He did seem it. it he did feel very random. 
you know why he's there because you're supposed to think he's taskmaster like mm -hmm. you're, you're you're supposed to be like oh it's her friend and it will be revealed mm -hmm. later that the reason he was able to get her all this stuff is because the main villain wanted her to get this far but no it, taskmaster is not that dude he's just a nice guy who has a couple scenes where he hooks he, he hooks Nat up with some shit. And then he fucks off until the very end. That is it. That is his character. Oh, he also sleeps in her bed. But not he with her. He does sleep a lot. I feel that though. <laughs> then again yeah, I'm saying then again, what he does, I, I went and I I I get it. <laughs> I mean, the only time I was yeah, like, the only time I was like, dude, what are you doing? Is when he like fell asleep at the side of the road or something. Yeah. Like, I, I understand being tired, but I've been tired, but not that. No, not that. What, what have you been doing to like, make you this sleep deprived? I, I don't understand. People will rob you and steal your stuff. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I have had days where I'm like, I am just going to fall down, and if I fall asleep, I will be in heaven. <laughs> I have felt that. Mm -hmm. um, anything else I want to say before spoiler? Oh, I guess we should say like our overall non-spoiler thoughts on the film. Mine are, I think it's pretty good. Like, I, I, I know I'm bitching about it for the most part, but the action is solid. Uh, once again, like, those things I like, like Yelena, Red Guardian, and, like, the whole family aspect, it's really good. It just could have been a lot better. Like, there's, there's a good chunk of things holding this movie back, and one of those is straight up the placement. Like, the problem with this movie is you know the stakes you know that black widow has to live because she has to die later that's kind of the problem with prequels in general and while i did enjoy this movie and i loved seeing it in theaters and i had so many moments where i laughed i smiled and i was into it that intro really hooked me it's it, it holds itself back at times and that's that's its worst quality what do you think I liked it, but it was very like, like for me, there were some points where I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It was almost like it didn't know where to focus, so I couldn't focus because mm -hmm. it was like one moment we're talking about this, and then the next, like, oh yeah, we gotta go do this real quick. Like, wait, you, you didn't give me enough time with this person or this thing. There is one scene. Uh, towards the end where it's part of her plan where she's like I won't say why she does it because I'll bring it up in spoilers but I, I want to say enough where Pat gets what I'm saying she activates a tracking chip and I was like okay that makes sense but then immediately the reason she like activated the tracking sh chip is no longer relevant, and yet she still lets it happen. And I was like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? This is going to be bad for you later. And then when it came up, I was like, okay, well, here are the consequences. Spoiler alert. No consequences. <laughs> she got out just fine. Um, but but what are your final final words to say before we spoil the fuck out of this. Was this movie pretty, or was it not so pretty? I'm kind of... I, I'm in between. It was fine. That's all I'll say. It wasn't amazing like some other ones, but it wasn't awful like mm. certain like other ones either. I think I might have liked it a little more than you, because like I also agree it's mm. fine. Like I think it's but along with that, I, I think it's pretty good. I, I think it holds up. Like, I would gladly watch this again. And I, I, I think, like, <clears throat> for a Black Widow movie, 
I would have liked some more Black Widow. So I think as a Black Widow movie, it's just okay. But as a movie, like as a Marvel movie, it's pretty good. I really, really liked it. All right, chat. Listen up. We're going into spoilers now. If you haven't seen the movie, leave. And if you don't want to leave, then... Well, you did this to yourself. Don't get mad at us. Look at Pat. Pat is so innocent. Why would you why would you get mad at him? They can't see you, Pat. <laughs> um I'll start us off with uh do we just want to talk about the after credit scene immediately? Do do we wanna play into the stereotype of me being the Hawkeye guy? Do we wanna do that? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it. So the after credit scene is Yelena meets Valentina, which, by the way, if this would have been at the end of Endgame, that wow. criticism of everybody being like, Natasha never got a funeral. We never saw Natasha mm -hmm. get buried. Right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. That would have addressed that. We would have saw her tombstone. It would have hinted at Hawkeye later. I, I think that could have been cool. Valentina walks up and is like, I gotta show you your next target. And it's a picture of Hawkeye. Yelena is going to go hunt down Hawkeye. How did you feel at this scene? It, it, it... Well, first of all, because I... It, it was... It was exciting because, you know, it's like, first off, you see uh, Valentina, who she first showed up in uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. But chronologically, this is before that, I think. Yeah, it's before it. Yeah. By a lot. Like so, mm. Which actually, now that I think about what you said, if this came out, actually her being there would have actually worked too if this came out when it was supposed to. Mm. Because people would have to scramble and be like, wait, who's Valentina? And then they'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> it's... Why am I blanking out who she is? Um, she she's a lot of things in the comics. She's Lady Hydra. She's like a um, yeah, that's the one. She's like Lady a Hydra, secret so agent. Like, mm -hmm. So it was like that, and then it was like, then they sh then she shows her uh, the picture of Hawkeye, and I'm just thinking, so this is definitely gonna play into the Hawkeye show. Did you think about me when you saw that scene? I did. I'm like, okay, that's, it's de like, I think we both, I think, I think the show is going to have that kind of like, it's definitely going to be like a misunderstanding type thing between mm. the two. I We're going to have to figure out some way to tell her I didn't kill her. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited because I, I love Yelena and throwing her like with Clint, I think will be a cool dynamic. I'm a little worried, though, because they keep throwing things in this Hawkeye show. Like, they've got this character named Echo, who's going to get her own show eventually. They got Kate Bishop. I've seen set photos showing that they are going to be doing the tracksuit Draculas. They have Lucky the Pizza Dog. That's so much plot for six episodes. I, I honestly hope there's more, but... I my favorite part of this scene has nothing to do with the scene itself because I knew I knew that was gonna happen. The second she was like, "I found your next target," I just got a big smile on my face. I knew it was Clint. What I did like though was after the scene, everybody in the crowd I was in because I saw this in theaters. Everybody was like, "Ooh, oh shit!" Like everyone was reacting like, "What does this mean?" Is, is she going to, like, go after Hawkeye? And everybody, like, started to get interested. Like, they were, like, I heard a couple people, like, when is the Hawkeye show? Is it soon? And I, I was just sitting there, like, they're getting people interested. Getting people ready. <laughs> I loved it. I, I loved that, like, ambiance of mystery where people were, like, oh, fuck. And it really was a fitting in to, like, look at, uh, Natasha's tombstone set up this future thing. And I think that this now confirms, at least to me, that Yelena is a villain. B 
because it, it was kind of up in the air before because in her um in the comics she's a lot of things and at one point she does take on the role of lady hydra but that isn't her only thing she's mostly just a betrayer like she betrays the hell out of everybody she even later betrays hydra I think her big cling to fame is she dated Nick Fury for a little bit. And there is famously a scene in the comics where they bang and it's weird. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see that in the movies. <laughs> but um, I, I do like that she keeps popping up and she's like putting together her own like evil Avengers. Like she has US Agent, she has Yelena... That's that's a Captain America, that's a Black Widow. I wonder if Abomination is going to be joining this team. I, I'm just excited for what this could be. But right now I'm just like... I'm just like sitting there like... I wish there was more. Like, I wish there was more of a direction. Like, what I mean is, after this movie... I don't fully know where the MCU is going. All I know is we're, we're going to go hang out with Hawkeye for a bit, which is enough for me. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I could see some people being like, that's it? What, what about the next big Thanos? What about the next villain? What about Avengers? Who, where's Kang the Conqueror? And all that shit. So what was your favorite part of the movie, though? I, I, I want to get your take, because this is the first thing uh, on the channel that you have reviewed. I, I, I want to hear what you liked. What, what, take, take me on a journey, almighty bunny man. Well, uh, as I said, I really like the stuff with uh, Red Guardian, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the, especially when he's in the... Uh, when he's in the prison and he's just mm -hmm. he's just lying to them about the whole Captain America thing but when someone calls him out on it he breaks their hand so this movie was a little gory like the scene towards the end yeah. where Black Widow fucking breaks her own nose mm -hmm. when he breaks this dude's arm and it just sort of flops fuck me <laughs> Oh, and that Black Widow who broke her back? Uh -huh. I mean, I loved it, but it was creepy. And then the, uh... What was the... And then there was also that scene where... The, that one Black Widow... I think that's what you were talking about, but the one where she falls. Mm -hmm. Into, like, that little small, like... I don't know what it was. Just, like, a giant puddle. But... Yeah. <laughs> You see her hit. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's like you know, they never show people do that in these things. They never show them hit. So, and then they get down to her, and she's got like her leg, her one leg twisted the other way. It's like, oh. The, I I was telling this to Skylar because me and Skylar had that friendship where he's okay with me saying stuff that isn't a big spoiler about the movie. So I was talking about the movie, but I didn't talk about anything big, like. Skylar doesn't know who Taskmaster is right now. Um, <laughs> but, um, I told him about that scene where she, like, falls, she, like, twists her leg, breaks her back, and yet she still tries to shoot Natasha. But then when she realizes she can't, she's like, oh, well, she points the gun at herself. And then they close up on that massive red scar on her face, and I was like, Jesus! We are in a different kind of movie. And then it was like, no, no, you're, you're still in a Marvel movie. Look, look at look at Yelena making fun of Black Widow for posing. It's a Marvel movie. Calm down, man. <laughs> I like that part, though. Well, she, see, I, see, I actually like it when superhero movies or any type of movie, like, they make people aware of stuff like that. Where it's like, she does do that every time she lands. Oh yeah, I love how you like, like why do you do that? Like why do you do <laughs> I love how the one time she does a pose, she immediately is like, eh. <laughs> like because yeah, like, she, just look at that pose she did. That had to hurt her knees. <laughs> right. 
I I think that like the reason Yelena is so good in this movie is because they gave her a lot of the stuff. Like, what if they would have given Nat some of this stuff? Like, what if Nat would have had the scene where it's like, this family was real to me? I, I think that would have made it more her movie. But in the end, since Yelena is the character that's going beyond this movie, Yelena's the character that gets to keep going. I kind of like that she was the star of the show for the most part. Like, all of her scenes are usually my favorite. I love, like, the action scenes to where she's beating the hell out of, like, Nat, throwing her against the walls. I loved when she opened the door and used it as a projectile to hit a motorcycle. And then I like the simpler scenes where she is describing the act of sterilization to Red Guardian and she's grossing him out. <laughs> I didn't even talk about fallopian tubes. It's just great. <laughs> I I think that this character has a lot of longevity, and I am all in for her adventure. But the movie is called Black Widow, so it's still, like... I guess, at the end, I would have either A, wanted her to take on the name Black Widow, to reveal that this was secretly her story. Or B, like, maybe make the movie a little bo more about Nat and then give Yelena her own thing later. It's weird because everything... It's hard to, like, say this because everything that's here is really good. Everything about Yelena is great and I don't want to take it away. But the only issue is, since it isn't her movie, it kind of feels like she's taking the spotlight. Which, I, I, I don't know. I kind of like that she got the spotlight because I like Yelena, but the movie's not called Yelena. That's, that's like the big issue I have with this film. That and, uh, you know, do we want to talk about Taskmaster? Okay. First off, I will say the 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 whole costume for Taskmaster it looked it looked perfect. Oh well, yeah. So the reason the, they couldn't do the skull because in China right. China doesn't like skulls. But I like the helmet mm -hmm. they gave him. And I think oh my, I hate I think me this was like the one thing about the movie that annoyed me because immediately off the bat I they go into that thing where they show his his the, the site mm -hmm. like what he sees and i'm like i sat there i'm like did they make him a robot <laughs> and i'm like he's not a robot <laughs> like i like i kind of understand cuz i guess i guess they don't like the idea that a human person can do what he can do so it's like we'll make him basically robotic until we tell you what what's going on. Would you, would you have preferred if it was a robot? Because I was getting T one thousand vibes from Terminator Two. Oh. Well, then when they showed who, what what it was, yes, I would have been fine with the robot. <laughs> I I think this twist did not annoy me as much as it did you. I I do agree that there is a problem with this, but uh. I, I I don't think I'm as mad at. Um, so, so before we even talk about that, because I'm realizing we've ignored the actual main villain, that's the first problem, guys. Uh, Taskmaster is not the main villain. He, he is not. All the advertising wants you to think Taskmaster is the main villain. He is not. It is a guy named Drakov, who, if you pay attention to your MCU lore, uh, Loki reference his him during that interview of him in Avengers. Uh, Dracov was the guy in charge of the Red Room. Nat thought she killed him. Spoiler alert, she did not. And I kind of liked Dracov because he was swarmy and stuff, but, like, mm -hmm. you know, he's only in the movie at the very end. He didn't get it. He only really gets one or two scenes. He was fine. Like, for this movie that is really not about... He 
did okay. Like, he did fine for what he was. Generic villain of the week. He, he did a good job. I don't care about that character from the comics or anything, so who cares? Someone I do care about, though, is Taskmaster, and they kind of ruined them. <laughs> it's... I get... Like, even with... Even with the main villain, even he, him, he was just he was just kind of there. Mm -hmm. like, like it was like that kind of, actually, he he was one. It's that Marvel does have this issue with that. The MCU does where they'll have like, like they know the movie needs a villain, so they just put someone there, mm -hmm. and that was this guy. It it, it, like, kind, it kind of feels yeah, like kind of, uh, a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they kind of did... Actually, see, they almost kind of did that with the first Iron Man movie with Obadiah, where he was just kind of there. But that was the first, so it wasn't mm -hmm. really... No one thought anything of it. Well, well, kind of like that. Well, <laughs> even then, like, Obadiah is still, like... He still talks to, like, the, the terrorist group <laughs> that Iron Man mm -hmm. fights at the very beginning, and mm -hmm. he's the final boss at the end. So I kind of forgive... Mm -hmm. I think Obadiah is better handled than I want to say Taskmaster because I'm about to say who Taskmaster is, but without even saying that, Taskmaster from the comics is like mm -hmm. this boastful tactician who knows how good he is, but he has the skill to back it up. And mm -hmm. I, in this, Taskmaster is a puppet. That's all Taskmaster is. They, they are a puppet... And I'll, I'll just say it, I don't even care that Taskmaster is a female now. Like, that doesn't bother me. I have no problem with Taskmaster being a lady. I just wish there would have been some character there. Like, what... Like, why would you take a super interesting character and just make them a mindless drone? Like, we have those in the comics. You could have, like, done that with lesser-known characters. Taskmaster's a fan favorite. And I'm just going to go ahead and say what it is. So, the Budapest uh, flashback we see. Um, which, by the way, there are tons of Hawkeye references in this movie. He gets name-dropped more than any other Avenger. Um, him and Nat were on a mission to take out Drakov. And the way that they found Drakov is they followed his daughter to this building. And the second that she went into the building, Nat told everybody that it was fine to blow it up. So they did. And Nat lived her whole life thinking she killed a kid. Go to the modern time Drakov's daughter is Taskmaster. She was rebuilt. We never really figure out what that means. We do see scarring on her face, but that's about it. I do not mind that this is Taskmaster now. I do not mind that Tony Masters became, became Antonia. I don't mind that. I just wish he would have she would have had more of a character to her if she would have spoke when attacking Natasha. And I, I think the way I would have fixed it is don't make Taskmaster be under mind control. Make it a revenge thing. Make it where this woman is so pissed off that she, like, got disfigured because of what Nat did and have the hunt be because of that. Have, like, there be hatred behind what Taskmaster is doing. I think there could have been more character here, and that would have been an easy way to do it, but they just didn't. How did you feel about it? I, like I said, I don't mind either. It's just, it was, it's kind of like you said, it was weird, because it was, like, they built up Taskmaster. Like, I don't think there was even really, like, like a hint that it was a human. Mm -hmm. It was almost just like, because like from the get-go, they almost want, I guess that's maybe the intention, because almost from the beginning, they're like, want people to think, oh, this thing's robotic. 
Mm. I mean, and... I, I I definitely got some of the T one thousand vibes, as I said. Like, it, yeah, it, it was a cold hearted killing machine. Mm. And it was kind of it was. I don't know. It was weird because. I think it, it it definitely threw you off because you know like when you first see Taskmaster they show mm-hmm. you them putting like a chip in the back of their of of her neck. Mm-hmm. So it was almost me like oh okay they just made Taskmaster a robot okay, <laughs> but then all of a sudden it's like no I mean to be fair like I I I'll give them that like I didn't think anything of it I didn't really have a hint in my head like oh yeah this is what it could it could be someone. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least they got that, but yeah. I don't know, it, it was it was odd. I was surprised by it being uh, mm-hmm. Drakov's daughter. Like, I I kind of figured it out, but like it was still like, oh yeah, we're doing this. Like I I thought it was possible, but I wasn't sure. Like they did a decent enough job of hiding the reveal. It's just that they really advertise that Taskmaster is the big boss when you're going into the movie. And, like, Taskmaster gets to fight Red Guardian, a super soldier, and Taskmaster is wiping the floor with him. She's doing such a great job. It just feels like they should have given Taskmaster a voice. Like, I wish if Taskmaster would have been able to talk to make frets or even just be like every move you make I can counter and shit like that just speak a little it it would have gone miles for me to make them more of a character but the way they did it here it it legit feels like nothing (laughs) like it legit feels like we were fighting Uh, Like, the reason the T-1000 works is it is this heartless killing machine that is this intimidating presence that follows the characters from the beginning. And that could have worked for Taskmaster. But the fact that, like, even the T-1000 spoke. And the, the whole thing is, like, when it did speak, it was cold and it was calculated. And Mm. in this, the big reveal of, like, no, I was actually a victim. At that point, like, any... I I, I don't fear this person. I feel bad for this person. So, So at that point, it's not scary anymore. You're not the killing machine. What are you? And the answer is not much. There is not a personality here. Even with Ultron, which I think wasn't super handled well, at least Ultron had a personality, you know? It was like evil Tony Stark. I I think that, like, my favorite scene of the climax, again telling you how good she was in this movie was Yelena just destroying the helicopter, her doing her scenes where she's running through the hallways as she's like avoiding the other black widows and stuff. And when she just looks over to Natasha as she's about to basically sacrifice herself to kill this guy they both hate, she just goes, this was fun. And then she blows up the helicopter. I liked that. And then once Drakov was dead, the villain was gone, and it was like, but no, Taskmaster's still here. What is Taskmaster going to do after she kills Black Widow? What is the plan for Taskmaster after that? I don't think there is one. (laughs) And and what the fuck was going on with Ross? (laughs) That pissed me off so much. Why was she like, okay, the plan is we'll lure Ross here. But then it was like, well, no, Ross didn't do shit because you killed Dragov, and that was always the goal. So why did you call Ross here at all? You knew you were going to kill Dragov. 
Ay, ay, ay. This, this movie has a couple problems. I think the prison break scene, like you were saying, I think that's one of the better points in the movie. Especially, like, you know, with Alexi. Like, David Arbor is a really good actor. Like, you get those little scenes of, like, he's looking at the doll and he's thinking about what could have been. He's lying to people to save his own pride. And then he looks mm-hmm. at he looks at the girls and he's like, oh, my girls are strongest girls. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets punched in the fucking face. I... Go ahead. And also, speaking of that, when they got him out, I like that little scene where, where of course, Nat does the little... does her landing when she comes off the... It, it's that scene that was in all the trailers. Mm-hmm. And they go up to Yelena, and she's like, oh, there she, she... I think she just goes, such a poser. <laughs> I, I I like little things like that. I, I like those little things, too. I like how Yelena starts the avalanche, and then she's just like, mm. well, this will be a cool way to die. <laughs> and then yeah. later, it comes back, because mm-hmm. when she's about to get, like, her brain cut open, she's like, this is, this is a significantly less cool way to die. <laughs> I... I, I do think, like, look, I don't want to sit here and just be like, Black Widow should have been more about Black Widow. But that really is my only problem with it, because the action is good. The family dynamic is good. Even, like, Melina, who arguably has the least amount of screen time of any of the family members, she came in super strong for me. Like, the second she showed up, they have this dinner scene where they're all upset with each other. And Melina has already contacted the Red Room to come get them. Red Guardian left to, like, um, talk to Yelena and calm her down after the fight because... Well, I'll, I'll talk more about Yelena in a minute because clearly I haven't said enough. <laughs> um, but there's a nice scene, again, one of the good Natasha scenes, where Natasha is talking to Melina just about, like everything she directly refers to her as a coward and was like did that life we have mean anything to you guys and it's a great little scene where it's like why did you keep this fake picture book and you slowly see her go from i was gonna betray you guys to all right let's make this plan so we can take down the red room and then Uh And then she has that one scene where she blows up the engine and she just casually calls Yelena and is like, hey, Yelena, change of plans. I had to bomb this thing. Um, Move things around and make it work. And she has that really funny moment where Red Guardian's like, I want to break something. And then she points to Taskmaster and is like, there's something you can break. (laughs) The whole time they're flirting, I... I really liked these characters. I loved the family. I just feel like of all the characters, Nat should have got the most and she didn't. This is the part where you speak bad. <laughs> it, you know, I mean, like, well, we know one thing that at least as far as we know, they're up the, the, uh, the uh, family uh-huh. is alive, and then so are a bunch of former Black Widows out there somewhere. So Now here's my question. Mm-hmm. Do we think those Black Widows got snapped? I don't know. It's... At the end, Yelena <laughs> doesn't look much older, so I think we can assume mm-hmm. Yelena got snapped. Mm-hmm. She does have a dog, though. Yes, the dog's name is Fanny. (laughs) I I wonder, Mm -hmm. because I think what they might do, and this this would kind of retroactively fix fix Taskmaster, Mm -hmm. is Taskmaster takes those Black Widows and kind of, either A, Taskmaster joins the Thunderbolts, which is what I thought was going to happen. Like, I thought that's why Ross came in. I thought Ross was going to get Taskmaster and, like, take her. And then it would be like, ooh, Taskmaster's gonna be on the Thunderbolts. No! 
the Black Widow's take her. So, what's happening there? Is is Taskmaster gonna like make her own team of Black Widows, and maybe she'll be like, "I will rise to what my father was, and I will be the next uh, leader of the Red Room." I, I I don't know the direction of that character because they literally gave her no personality. Yeah, it's, it is. It's very weird. Like this, there were parts of the movie where, it was, like you said, it almost felt like there wasn't enough time for mm -hmm. certain things. Yeah, I I liked. I feel like the intro to this movie is so important, though. I feel like mm -hmm. if you don't have that beginning bit where you show the family where you show them actually being a family, the rest of the movie doesn't work. And I loved the intro. I loved when uh, Alexi is on the plane wing. Because while some people thought that was silly, I did not. I was so scared that they were going to have to leave Alexi, that he was going to fall off the wing, and then he was going to end up in prison. Because we know he ends up in prison. I thought mm -hmm. this was that. And no, he got to go with him. You see this cool scene where he's shooting the gun from a plane wing. I thought uh, this intro was great. And when he looks to him and he's like, my girls are strongest girls, I felt for them. I, I feel like they did really view themselves as family. They were just kind of in denial about it because they were like, oh, it's another mission. It's another mission. But mm. it, it really wasn't. It it was this big thing that they had to admit to themselves. And I think Red Guardian's admitting that is when he sings American Pie. And the only reason he knows it is because Yelena used to sing it. And we know his feelings on America. <laughs> that... It, that... that um whole thing where they're on that what was it a farm Molina was on it was a pig farm yeah she had pigs I mean that that, that part was kind of odd like especially when she does the thing where she's like hey look I can make this pig die for a second I looked to Skylar and said a pig gets suffocated in this movie they suffocate a pig and he was like are you joking and I was like I can tell <laughs> I want him to watch the movie and be like, son of a bitch, they suffocate a pig? <laughs> I I have to wonder how that scene was for, like, kids, <laughs> you know? Like, for me, I was like, like, I wasn't laughing. I was like, what the fuck? Is, are they just going to kill the pig? Is that just going to happen? <laughs> so I have to imagine there would be kids crying like, mommy, what's going on with this piggy? Why are they hurting it? Why? Although, I would have been much more terrified of, like, the breaking arm than the pig, I guess. I also, like, I, I, I think that pig scene is also a little important because it shows that, like, Milena is okay with sacrificing some of her test subjects if it means, like, she gets to go further. Uh-huh. But, like, she's not okay with uh, sacrificing her family. So, I think that's neat. I I have... You, you know what's interesting to me? I think one of the best moments for Nat is when... The scenes before they start the main story, I guess, where it's like... They're, they're, at, the, they're at the garage. They're at the fucking gas station. And Yelena is talking to her about the other Avengers and she makes fun of the posing. She actually does one of them and she's like, the thing you do with your hair and it's hilarious. Um, but then they just sit down and they have some beers and they talk about like their lives and what it could have been. Like she's talking about the fake story she had to tell. 
And I think at one point, Nat asks, did you want kids? And she responds, oh, I want a dog. I, I think that's like a good moment for those characters where they're just like discussing what they want out of life. And I think that scene works because we know that like in our time, meta style, we know that Nat doesn't get her future. But Yelena could theoretically still achieve her stuff. And I think like having the dog at the end is a sign of like, she she's living her life that Nat never could. And I like that. Like, I, I think that's why the vest is so important too, where it's like, this is the first thing I ever wanted. This is the first thing, piece of clothing I ever bought for myself. This is important to me. And now I'm giving it to you because you're important. You're more important than my freedom. I can't wait for her to try to kill Hawkeye and fail. <laughs> <laughs> Although there are some people like I mm -hmm. hope she guts him. <laughs> yeah, there was something about that whole scene where she was doing the thing where she's like, she was going like, why, why do you do that? Why do you do that with your hair? <laughs> but you, you, I just, I, I thought it was weird right off the bat because I'm like, you guys are talk talking about a lot of not normal things in front of this just random guy who's behind the counter who's gonna. <laughs> Who's the cashier? Like, do you not? <laughs> I mean, like, did I miss something? Like, did you notice that? It's like you guys are talking about murder and stuff like kill stuff like that in front of this random person. Like, I don't think you should do that. I mean, I would have like they also talked about Nat's life as an Avenger, so I thought maybe like maybe it didn't matter from that perspective. But you are totally right. They straight up are like, how are we going to like? break into this place and kill this dude. Meanwhile, someone is, like, checking out their groceries. <laughs> like, this is the equivalent of me in, like, the grocery store, like, and then mm -hmm. we're gonna blow up the car. Someone would call the police. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I think that, like, I, I think that what's weird is this movie has a lot of heart in it, which really made me like it. But it almost feels like its direction is wrong. Like, it feels like it's so preoccupied with setting up these characters that it's ignoring the title character. And, and in all the advertisements, the two characters we see most are Black Widow and Taskmaster. And I think Taskmaster specifically... You know, she don't have shit. <laughs> like, she is, like... There is a cut of this movie where you could edit out the character of Taskmaster completely and still have a solid film. Mm -hmm. You couldn't edit Loki out of Avengers. You couldn't edit out friggin' Thanos from Infinity War. But you could edit Taskmaster out and nothing would be different. Like, you, you just replace... Taskmaster with a new character named, I don't know, a, 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 a Terminator the Kill Lady. Terminator the Kill Lady. <laughs> you you put that character in, and that's all you need. I, I think, and, and I guess this will lead into my final thoughts and my ranking. I, I think that, like, this movie was great. I do. I love this movie. But I think I love it for the wrong reasons. I love it. And that's what's so weird about Marvel. <laughs> Everything is good. So the stuff that is like the slightest bit not has good, we have to bring up as if it's a major criticism because everything is good. Like in any other film, this would be a nitpick. But since it's Marvel, it ha it's my main problem. It just feels like not Black Widow's movie. And she's important. She has a lot going on. But you know what else? You know the other movies where she was important and had a lot going on? Mm -hmm. Civil War, Avengers, Avengers Endgame, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Avengers Infinity War. She had a lot going on in those movies too, and yet it was not her movie. 
She had a lot going on in Captain America Winter Soldier. And yet it wasn't her movie. This is her movie, and it feels like she should have had more. Like, I think if they would have added in a complete, uninterrupted flashback, like, let's say, like, a ten-minute-long scene flashback of, <laughs> of her and, like, Clint in Budapest, and maybe edited out some of the other Yelena and Red Guardian scenes to accommodate for that, Hmm. maybe maybe we could have been more like this is black widow's movie look at all the black widow in this but honestly this this truly just feels like a passing of the torch movie to me it literally uh. ends with yelena going and seeking out an avenger so i i do like this movie like everything in it is good it's solid it's just not really what should have been in a movie called Black Widow, I guess. Like, I, I feel like there's a version of Black Widow you could do without any of the family characters. And while I loved them, the movie's called Black Widow. So that's kind of the beginning, middle, and end of it. And that's my big criticism. That being said, I loved the music for Teen Spirit. I loved that version of it. I loved the intro where it was like... Sl- cutting to all the different like shots of the girls in their training and then it ends on like the black widow belt and her adjusting her costume love title Mm. sequences like that i hope the mcu does more of them i think that this was a really good movie it just had a problem with who it was about it had a couple weak villains but overall the plot was pretty good and i enjoyed myself i will watch this movie a lot of times i just i I think i'm always gonna have that issue of this was your one chance to tell black widow's story and you told me the story of red guardian and i guess a future black widow uh that being said though i really like this movie so i'm ranking wise like one out of ten i think (laughs) I'm not giving it a 1 out of 10, but uh, I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. There was there was room for improvement. In fact, I, I, I think 8.5 is fair enough. I think it's good. I uh, With Loki, I have given more than one episode a 10 out of 10. With uh, something like um, the Avengers movies... I would say most of those are solid nines. And my favorite thing in the MCU, which is Captain America, the first Avenger, which I think is a perfect origin story. I, I, I give that a strong 10 or maybe even 11 <laughs> out of 10. I think with this one, it did what it sought to do. It was doing a really good job with it. Mm. What it sought out to do wasn't necessarily what I thought it should be doing. And that is kind of a problem for me personally. I also think that with the villains, Taskmaster should have been more, should have had a personality. Again, I do not care that Taskmaster is a lady now. That doesn't matter to me. I just wish that the character had some more personality. But what are your final thoughts in the Patrick, and this is the first thing you'll ever rate on my channel, so I'm excited. Well, zero I... out of ten. <laughs> See, I think I give it an eight out of ten. I think it, like you said, like it was. It, I enjoyed it, but there were parts where, uh, where it felt like I said it felt like, damn it, this would have made more sense if mm-hmm. it was placed where it was. Like it came out where it seemed to. Like it should have. Oh yeah. And I think it definitely, definitely felt like, you know, it's like it's almost like they forgot that this was a uh, Black Widow movie at times. Mm. So they're like, hey, let's say hey, we got all these characters. It's like, yeah, but you, it's it's a Black Widow movie. It's supposed to be. You, but you know what I think? You know mm-hmm. what I think fully encapsulates the problem. This is a movie that is set in the past that's main focus is the future. 
They do not mm -hmm. focus on the present. They do not focus on the past. They don't really focus on, like, Black Widow as a character. They're just focusing on, we gotta set up these characters because they're gonna be in it later. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a bad thing because these are good characters. It's just, we need a more Black Widow, bitch. That's it. <laughs> but continue. Yeah, and, and, and there's also one thing I, I forgot to mention that I noticed. Oh, go ahead. Of course I did. Was it, it just, maybe it's just me, but was there a lot of, I think it may be it's just something with Black Widow, or maybe I just, but there's a lot of focus on, on butts in this movie. Did you notice that? I did not see like, butts. I, like, there was, like, well, like, every time they'd show a camera angle with either Nat or Yelena, just about, it was always starting low. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, we know that they have butts. We know. I don't. I don't think it was intentional. I think it's. I think it's. Well, they've always done that with Black Widow, though. I think that's kind of the point. Like she's, she's sexy. That's the point. I I did notice that in uh, the Josh Whedon cut of Justice League, mm -hmm. there were a lot of shots shots of Diana where it's like, we got to show yeah. this butt flashes in the <laughs> background, but here's the butt. I did not notice it here. I only watched the movie once. And I gotta be real, I was not looking for butts. <laughs> but I, I would not be surprised if they were present. I I think that maybe what it might have been is, you know how they were like doing the poses and making fun of the poses? Maybe uh, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. You, you could be right. Maybe there was just Maybe there was just one person who was like, we gotta throw the butts in there. We gotta be sure. Where was Taskmaster's butt? Where was Red Guardian's butt? I want to see Red Guardian's butt. Well, we did get to see Red Guardian in his underwear for a second. You know, you are right. And that was probably the most sexual... sexual <laughs> like, out of every character, Red Guardian wore the least clothing at one point. <laughs> yeah. And then we got... To I actually did like that little part where you hear him grunting and shit in the bathroom trying to put on the costume. But the gir the the girls are all probably have no idea what he's doing, so they're like, anyway, let's drink. <laughs> Melina's like, let's drink. It's like When he comes out in the suit and you can see Melena's kind of into it and he does a little dance. I loved that. <laughs> I, I think I actually like that about the two of them, that they're still into each other. Oh yeah, and, and despite what he's been through and what how he looks, like yeah, they're into it. They're I, into each other. I like how she's like, "You got fat," but immediately starts flirting with him. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I oh, I also got to, got to mention one of the pigs was named Alexi. He's like, "You named a pig after me." <laughs> this movie is love, weirdly one of the funnier MCU movies. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then she's just like, "Don't you see the resemblance?" It's like that pig. Looked a little mm. like David Harbour. <laughs> it did. I mean, I I also liked. Um, I I just kind of liked. This is a good movie, dude. Like, I, I I can't understate that enough. I need to say it right here. If you're thinking about seeing the movie, go see it. But my recommendation for you. I guess I should have said this during the no spoilers, but my recommendation is go see the movie don't expect it to be like the big black widow story you were hoping for and don't like go in knowing that like taskmaster isn't going to be all that important if you just go in knowing those two things and like lower your expectations you're gonna have a great time this is a good movie with great action. I love the scene where it's like, we don't have enough gas to get here. We can get there. All right. And then the plane just crashes. It's honestly a really good, really well handled film about this family. But it should have just been about Black Widow. And that is kind of the end of it. Again, I'm sticking with an 8.5. I think that's a great rating. Pat gave it an 8. By all accounts, 
I mean, I guess I'd have to ask you. That's a good movie, right? You think this was a good movie? I do. So, yeah. It's like I said, it, it wasn't like... It's not one of the best, because obviously it's not, but mm -hmm. it's it's good for what it is and what it's set to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think, I think it achieves every goal it tried to do. It's just for some things like Taskmaster and Black Widow, maybe it should have tried to be doing different things. And that's that's kind of the beginning and the end of it. Um, but overall, great movie, great scene. There was no bad CGI or anything. I liked it. There was one point where I was like, this kind of looks like bad CGI. Did you notice that with like the, the, the needles they shoot into Alexi? That looked like CG to me, and it did not look good. Yeah, I also noticed a little bit of that when... I think it was, I think it was Nat when she falls. Was that Nat? When she falls outside the building and she like hits some of the pipes on like she some did. of the vents on the way down. That was yeah, the like job. there was. A, yeah, there was a point where like it wasn't CG, and then for like a lot, like it looked like they actually had like a stunt person do it, but then like for like a split second, they're like, oh, that was that was a CG person. And then also that part where she like swings in through the window. Well, no, not window, but when she's hanging on to the edge of the uh, big thing that that big satellite thing and then she swings in like that was clearly you could tell that was a CG person but other than that I didn't really notice anything yeah and like you know I'll bring it up almost specifically because it's Hawkeye month and I'm the Hawkeye guy there were some good references to him like what kind of bullets make these holes not bullets arrows I think that I like that he was referenced, but I, I think I would have wanted him to be in the movie. I, I think we should have saw Budapest. I, I really think we should have. But that's it from us. Pat, do you have anything to plug? Do you want to plug your Twitcher and, and stuff? Well, my Twitch is Patrick Bun Bun. It's all one word. Twitch.tv dot com slash no not dot com twitch.tv slash pat yes. Patrick Bum Bum. Mm -hmm. It is in the description if anyone wants to check it out. I know I'm a little late on the Hawkeye videos. I, I had something come up that was pretty important. I'm sorry. There will be another one Wednesday, probably before Loki. I'm hoping to put out three this week. And if I have to upload one on the same day as another one, then fuck it, I'll do it. But thank you guys for watching. And remember, next time you're about to make a joke about um, a woman's body or like a, a period joke, just remember that they know more about their bodies than you ever could and all the power to disgust you with the weird process <laughs> of like cutting out tubes and stuff. That is the story Yelena taught me. <laughs> Goodbye everybody.